Hello family and welcome back. Get ready to learn how to cut and sew this stylish v-neck sequin dress featuring shoulder and skirt drapes. No matter your experience level, I'll provide helpful tips and guide you through each step. And for the first time viewers, kindly consider subscribing for more content. And to get started, we'll be using two types of fabric. First is a sequin stretchy fabric for skirt and under bust area about 2 meters. This is my first time using a sequin fabric and I can't wait to see how it works out. Second is a lighter stretchy material for sleeves and yokes which is about 1.5 meters. Chiffon fabric is another option you can consider. Okay guys, to so start front border is drafting. Take shoulder line to bust line measurement first. Next is to under bust line. And lastly shoulder line to waist line. Having much repeat same on the side in order to achieve straight horizontal lines which you are about to square out. With that completed, I'll go ahead and label each starting the shoulder line all the way to waist line. Next, we'll create a basic neckline that is 3 inches wide and 3 inches deep. Then I'll just smooth out neckline with a curve ruler. Now we'll take half shoulder measurement from center front. Mine is 6.5 inches. I'll add half an inch for seam allowance. From there, measure 1 inch down for your shoulder slope which is to be drawn from the mark to neckline width as can be seen. Alright, let's measure chest length starting from the point where the shoulder slopes down. I've put a formula on screen to help you calculate yours in case you don't know how. Once you have that measurement, mark and draw straight horizontal line across that point. So now that's the chest line. On top of that, transfer half shoulder measurement to drawn chest line just so you can achieve perfectly straight armhole depth joining shoulder slope to chest line. With that in mind, mark quarter bar circumference on chest line. Then go ahead and find armhole depth midpoint and mark as well. Further on, go in with 0.5 inches from that exact point. And lastly, use a French curve to come up with a nicely drawn armhole in that manner. Next, I'm going to add that. To do so, I'll measure half bust span inwards from center front on waist line. I repeat same measurement on the bust line. These marks will help me draw that line along like that. Measure further that width of 1 inch, that's 0.5 inches on each side of that line. And still on that lane, go down by 1 inch from bust lane and mark that apex. And basically that's how to come up with a basic dart. Now we'll be focusing on taking quarter waist circumference on waist line from center front, plus 1 inch dart replacement, plus another 1 and a quarter inch of stitching allowance. Since we already marked quarter bar circumference on chest line earlier, we'll be required to add same stitching allowance and with that in mind, draw body side outline like that. Time to move on to cup part drafting. Measure half an inch inwards on bust line right there so as to draw first bit of it from the mark to under bust line. When done, measure about one and three quarter inches on side outline from under bust line, exactly what I'm doing, just so I can finish up cup's lower edge with the help of a curve ruler as shown. That's not all since you also need to draw lines from where you'll slash and spread for pleats. Since my shoulder line ain't that much, I've decided to mark 3 quarter inches rise from where I'll just draw lines radiating towards cap's bottom edge. For wider bust circumference, incorporating 4 to 5 lines will ensure enough pleats. Next is to widen neck width by 0.5 inches measured from original neck width to achieve a flattering V neck line. Let's now focus on cutting out outside edge of the pattern. Later we'll move on to shaping the cups and under bust areas. So guys, this is basically yoke or cup part, whichever name you choose to call it. Next up, I'll number each of the cups panel to the last one. Pay close attention as I cut out one leg of the dart, then I'll wrap it like that, after which I'm going to secure it with a tape. I'm now going to trace out another pattern from the main one. The reason I normally do this is to have one as reference so that once the first is slashed and spread, I'm able to shape it using the second one. Here we go guys, let's now cut through each drone panel. Here is another pattern paper, the line drawn represents point of reference from where I'll spread all cut panels. To do this I'll be making sure the first line on them is aligned to reference line as I secure with tapes each one of them from the first to the last. It's equally important to know that I'll be spreading by one inch. With that completed, it's time to cut out to its original shape just as I'm doing. 
next step involves drafting the back part on this other piece so the zipper allowance right there and lines drawn from shoulder line to waistline to start we'll measure neck width of 3.5 inches since front was also widened with 0.5 inches on top of that is basic neck depth of 1 inch when done i'll smooth out neckline using a curve ruler all right let's now have half shoulder measurement marked on shoulder line then go down by one inch for shoulder slope this is not new because if you recall it's the same procedure we used in drawing armhole depth finding chest line and drawing it from there measure quarter bar circumference on chest line and mark so as to draw armhole curve which is slightly different from front's armhole for dating purposes, measure half bar span on waistline from center back and on bust line as well, just so you can draw that line as can be seen. In addition to that, measure on it that width of 1 inch, whereas for that depth, reduce it by 1 inch from bust line and mark that apex or point. Once done, finish the dart. Moving forward, you'll be required to measure quarter waist circumference on waistline from center line, plus 1 inch that replacement, plus 1.5 inches more stitching allowance. Further on, add same stitching allowance to whatever was measured earlier on chest line so that you can comfortably come up with side edge in that manner. Now that we have the bodice block, move 3 quarter an inch downwards on the side from chest line. Again measure 1 inch this time downwards from chest line still on the center line. Then square out a line which is to separate your part from the lower back bodice. One last thing is creating V neckline drawn from neck width down to chest line. And like I said, we have yoke part right here. That being so, cut out a long outline as I'm showing you. This next step involves cuts front part drafting in this pattern paper which is on fold. The top edge represents waistline guys. To start measure waistline to full length line. For my case, I'm subtracting bodice measurement from total dress full length of 42 inches. Get this right, this is the length of the lower side. After which I'll just square out a line across full length. For hip line, I'm going to measure about 9.5 inches from waistline and a line across it as well. Time to add body measurement which is why I'll take quarter waist circumference from the fold on waistline plus about one and a quarter stitching allowance. Same considerations will apply to all the lines. Taking quarter body measurement plus same allowance. Once done, use a hip cup ruler as an extra support to come up with skirt outline, then cut out as you'll see later. Back pattern paper is already on fold. As always, let's create a zipper allowance of about 1.25 inches from the fold. Having drawn, you'll be required to bring forth the front pattern and pin it down on the back pattern paper. Know that the front center line has to be aligned to back center line exactly what i've done since we'll have basic darts at the back add one inch from front side outline then draw new back side outline as demonstrated after which trace out waistline and side edge by cutting with back pattern cut add that the normal way i'm sure by now most of you know how to come up with a basic dart having repeated it over and over again even on my previous videos now we'll be focusing on snatching waist with 0.5 inches from waistline. This is also a way of preventing zip bulge. After it, draw new back center line as shown. Then go ahead and cut it out from waistline down to bottom edge. Okay, get ready to learn how to cut out a high low skirt, which is why I'll pin down back pieces together from center line from one end to the other. Once I'm done with that, follow along what I'm doing. It will seem as though it has been stitched from center line. Moving forward, pin down front pattern on it after making sure all edges are aligned. For my case, I'll measure 5.5 .5 inches from hip line on the higher side. So now I'll draw new bottom edge from the mark to the left corner from where I'll cut out. As you saw, this dress has drapes on the right side edge and it is the most interesting part here. This is how to go about it. Measure 2 inches from waistline. Then from there measure about 1.5 inches as many times as you want depending on the number of pleats you want to create. Here I'm drawing a line diverting towards waistline so that I can measure points where the rest of the lines are to be drawn. And I feel like 1 inch apart is perfect. Then I'll go ahead and join the first mark to the second ones with lines. If you want like straight pleats, go ahead and draw straight lines. I'm currently slashing through the lines but know that I'm not doing that all through. Here I'm trying to spread it on a different piece of paper with about 3 quarter inches in between all channels. Mm -hmm. 
Next is just give it a shape by cutting as I'm showing you. As you can see I've traced out fabric pieces from drafted patterns leaving about 0.5 inches stitching allowance except on the side edges. Did same for back pieces as well. Fabrics and linings all traced out. This is where the cups duplicate comes in. As I'll be pleating I'll use it to ensure exact size achieved. And very fast let's move all the pins as we prepare to begin stitching. Like I mentioned we'll make pleats as we use the duplicate to make sure the size and shape is maintained. So guys from these notches you'll be required to double hem V neckline first before we start making pleats. Have pleated one of the cups off camera just to give an overview of what your outcome should look like. Let's split the second cup together. Decided to measure 2 inches through our shoulder line just so it's easy making pleats from them and also they'll be uniform this way. I'm trying to check if shoulder lengths are of the same measurement before I proceed. The same way, pleat again round bottom edge all round then iron. Here is the end result after ironing and stitching both ends. Remember to take your time and be patient during this process. You have to keep pressing until the fabric lays flat like what you see. Alright, now wrap them a bit then stitch right there. That being so, it's time to attach underbust piece to cap pieces. First you need to notch at the center after folding like that. Then align the notch to the cap's midpoint as you stitch both sides with 0.5 inches all round. This is me showing you how to practically attach underbust piece to cap pieces as explained earlier. The trick here is to always begin stitching from the center points going sideways. Or you can as well pin them down together before stitching. It's a lot more easier that way. Okay, let's wrap the ugly side using the underbust lining. Don't worry, this is quite simple. Put right sides together and stitch with 0.5 inches all round. Again, stitching has to be done from center points, guys. I'm currently top stitching on the underbust lining very close to seam line. This will prevent the lining from showing on the fabric's right side. Back pieces here match to linings. Let's stitch along the neckline from top to bottom with 0.5 inches. After stitching, top stitch same way we did with the front part. Now we'll focus on attaching lower borders to yoke part. Put right sides together then stitch with 0.5 inches. With that completed, wrap it up using the lower borders lining and stitch further with 0.5 inches. Again top stitch on the lining right side to prevent it from popping on the fabric's right side. After we seal from center lines together as well by stitching, you should end up with something like this having followed instructions given. And always remember to iron after each and every step. From here go ahead and stitch that's from where we made notches. Look at what we've got. I want to show you a very key technique also used to prevent zip bulge. But first I'll draw center line in that manner. This is how to go about it. Measure half an inch upwards from waistline, then square out a line as shown from where you'll be required to cut out. After doing so, loosely stitch along drawn center line top to bottom so as to easily join shoulders. Having stitched loosely along center line, bring forth front pattern and follow along what I'm doing. When joining shoulders, wrap everything else with the lining and stitch. Here is the final look after joining shoulders as explained, looks neat on both sides. Alright, I want us to make pleats on the skirt's front piece. If you notice, a line is drawn which is hip line. First, we'll confirm measurement on the shorter height which is about 10 inches, whereas we have 14 inches on the opposite side. Meaning, we'll be forced to pleat 4 inches for the heights to be same. Also, me pinning down as I pleat 4 inches from the longer side. Hard to confirm if at all what I have is 10 inches required measurement. Forming dreads or pleats on a fabric is that simple guys. Now I'll be attaching skirt pieces to top from waistline with 0.5 inches right sides facing each other. As you can see a line is drawn which is back center line. So now we loosely stitch along it on the zipper space. A back stitch then I'll proceed with small normal stitches to the end. Have done as per the instructions given and I didn't back stitch at the top since we'll tear it out when fixing zipper. Further on stitch on side using body measurements both sides. I love this professional look. Let's now move on to tearing zipper allowance. Having done that, here are puff sleeve pieces to be fixed to armholes gathered only around wrist edges. Top edges are exact armhole measurements. Have created an allowance just so I can easily fix sleeve all round with 0.5 inches right sides put together. 
Once I'm done, I'll go ahead and fix this long hidden zipper on its space as well as double hemming round bottom of the dress. Have honestly enjoyed creating this dress. What do you think of the end result? Can you let me know in the comment section? I appreciate you all for the love and support. Be sure to subscribe if you are yet to.